Flintang. Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my Objective C tutorial. This tutorial came about because a viewer of one of my other tutorials requested it, so here it is. In this presentation, I'm going to go through mostly every data type available to you in Objective C except for just a couple of them that are a little bit more complicated that I'll cover at a later date. First off, you have ints. These are positive or negative numbers that do not include a decimal point. Then you have floats. They are also positive or negative numbers with a decimal point. Doubles, which are just simply large floats. CHARs or characters, which are just simply single characters. ID, these are generic data types used to store a reference to an object, and I'll cover this in much more detail later. Arrays, you can think of an array as a big box with many boxes inside of it. Each of those boxes inside of the big box would also contain its own value. And strings are just strings of characters. You've seen the following in other previous tutorials, but basically an integer stores a positive or negative number without a decimal. You can trust that you will be able to store numbers up to this gigundo number right here that I'm not going to read off of. There are, of course, different versions of the int data type, and here below I'm going to list how to define those data types. I'm going to list the maximum number they can hold, and then on top of that I'm going to show you what code you would use inside of the nslog function if you wanted to print those integers out to the screen. You can see them down here in the third, fourth, and fifth bulleted item. Just want to make a special note, if you define a long, long int, the maximum number you can hold in a long, long int is completely machine dependent, but you can trust that you can, by the very least, be able to put a number of the length that you can see here in the fifth bulleted item. Floats are used to store numbers that might require a decimal. Objective C, by default, stores all decimal numbers in the data type named double, which I'm going to go over next. But if you want to force it to store in type float, you would do that by appending the letter F to the end of the number, like I do here in the following example. You can store numbers expressed in scientific notation also in a float and you would do that as you can see here in the example and if you want to use a float in nslog you would use the notation percent sign followed by the letter f if you want to use scientific notation however you would instead use the code percent sign followed by the letter e variables of type double are guaranteed to be accurate up to the value you can see here on the screen and they can contain decimals and are the default data type for storing these types of numbers, being numbers with decimal points. The code for using a double in an S log would be the same as floats, which is the percent sign followed by the letter F, or the percent sign followed by the letter E. If you want to store a single character in a variable, you would declare that variable to be of type char. You define what character is stored in the variable by surrounding that character with single quotes, like I showed here in, in this example. To use a character variable to print to the screen with nslog, you would use the code percent sign followed by the lowercase letter c. You can also store special characters in a character data type by instead storing a backslash code. And I'll list the backslash codes here on the next slide. Here you can see all of the backslash codes available to you and if you wanted to store them in a variable of type character you would just include the backslash followed by the letter you can see here on the screen and of course you would use single quotations. Remember from the previous tutorial when we asked the computer to set memory aside for us to store our new object data? Well the data type ID is used to store a reference to that object. And this data type is used normally to pass objects to methods in Objective-C. I'll cover it in much more detail later in the tutorial. You can store multiple values in just one array variable. Think of an array as a big box, like I said before, with a whole bunch of little boxes in it. For example, you could give an array the name ages and then place inside of it all the ages for everybody that you know. You would create that specific array below if you only knew 10 people. And then in the next example, you can see here that I'm creating an array named ages that holds the maximum number of five integers and then assigns those five values to this array. Here I'm doing the exact same thing except I am using a series of characters instead of a series of integers. Integers. And if you wanted to use nslog with this last array, you would just follow my example as you can see here in the third bulleted item. Even though I am using an array, I am still going to use the percent followed by the letter C because this does contain character data. And in this specific example, your output 
would be the first letter, which is B. You may ask yourself, why didn't it output the letter A? The reason is that the first value stored in an array is stored in the index zero. You could also output the letters array as just one string of characters if you followed the example as you see here in the last bullet item. Here you can see specifically that I use the percent sign followed by the letter S and then I use the variable name letters without brackets following it. This would output A, B, C, D, E to the user screen if you specifically called this NSLog function. You can also create multi-dimensional arrays. Let's say you wanted to store the table, you can see here, which is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, and so forth and so on. You would do that like you can see here in the sixth bulleted item. Here I'm creating a multi-dimensional array that's gonna contain integers, and I'm naming it number table. And you can see through the use of these brackets and commas, I'm going to assign these numbers to said array. If I would then call for the value of said multi-dimensional array named number table, it would return a value of seven. And remember, the first index is zero, like I explained in the previous example. And if you want to store a variable number of objects in an array, you can most definitely do that. Put the array inside of a method or function, such as I show you here in this example. If you want to store a series of characters to a variable, you need to create a string variable. And if you want to be able to use strings, you will have to include a new framework like you do with foundation.h. You need to include the line of code I have here in the second bulleted item. If you do so, you can now create and assign values to a string variable like I do here in this example, and you define a string with the specific code ns string followed by a star and then whatever you want the name of your string to be followed by an at symbol and then the name of the string you want to assign it held between two quotes. Now pay special attention to this string because I'm going to refer to it in a couple following examples. You would output this string using nslog like I show here in this example. The code percent signed at is used to output a string, array, or object to the screen. One problem with these types of strings is that after you create them, they cannot be changed. To create a string that can be changed, you need to, to declare it instead as an ns mutable string, like I show you here in the fifth bulleted item. This would actually create a string storage variable. And in the final example here on the, on the screen, I'm actually storing the string that is assigned to the variable str to the new string, which is a mutable string called I can change. In the next tutorial part four, I'm going to go through everything that has to do with looping, decision making, and arithmetic operations in Objective-C, and I promise you will really understand it. It's much more simpler than understanding how to create mutable strings. Till next time.